good evening ladies and gentlemen this is uh, usmle videos welcome to usmle videos.net your source of uh, usmle videos today i would like to discuss diabetes mellitus type two, type 1 in fact i want to give you a basic introduction to this disease so you can start studying the major concepts now, diabetes is a chronic disease due to pancreatic insufficiency and it results in inadequate production of insulin. Since it is a chronic disease, it affects so many systems in the body. The famous pathies, the neuropathy, the retinopathy, the nephropathy, the vasculopathy, the dermopathy. There are so many pathies because of the effects of hyperglycemia on major systems in the body. Now let me give you some basic points. You can see ketosis, diabetic ketoacidosis in type 1 diabetes mellitus. It's usually rapid onset. The body type is normal or thin and then the most common age of onset is 8 to 12 years. That is the mean age of onset for diabetes mellitus type 1. The onset is like 1.5 years earlier in girls than boys. And coming to demographics, it, is, it has a predilection for white people. But it has, it, is, it has its lowest incidence among the blacks. Now dietary factors. Insulin dependent or non-insulin dependent diabetes. It is associated with uh, increased risk when patients consume high amounts of dairy products. Now, let me ask you, what are the most, most common HLA types associated with this, this disease? HLA DR3 and DR4. So, that is an important question in USMLA. HLA DR3 and DR4, those are the susceptibility genes that increases the risk. And also HLA B8 and B15. Now, environmental factors, the viruses like mumps, cytomegalovirus, hepatitis virus, Coxsackie virus are implicated in the increased incidence of diabetes. Diet high in nitrosamines, environmental toxins and also autoimmune diseases such as hypothyroidism or Edison's disease they are implicated as common associated features in people having diabetes mellitus. Now when you come to diagnosis, you need to think about polyuria, increased urination, polydipsia, increased thirst, polyphagia, increased eating, anorexia, loss of appetite, they are also commonly seen. Weight loss like 10 to 30 percent. A patient comes and uh, reports polyphagia, polydipsia and weight loss. You should directly think about diabetes mellitus. And uh, muscle cramps, irritability, vision changes due to retinopathy. Altered school and uh, work performance, headaches, anxiety attacks. These are the things that present with the symptoms. Now, how do you diagnose diabetes mellitus? The WHO classification is commonly used. That is, if the fasting glucose is more than 126 mg per deciliter, you should think about diabetes. If the random glucose is more than 200 
mg per deciliter that also establishes diabetes. So basically that is the thing, other tests you need to order urinalysis, WBC, hemoglobin A1C level, C peptide insulin level, islet cell antibodies, glutamic acid decarboxylase antibodies because they also show abnormalities in this. Now what are the main causes for secondary diabetes mellitus, pancreatic disease like uh, pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis where pancreas is inflamed repeatedly is a cause for diabetes, cystic fibrosis, hormonal disorders like pheochromocytoma, multiple endocrine and anastoma, adenomatosis, sorry, and uh, glucose so storage diseases, type 1. And now let me ask you a question. What is the genetic skin disorder that is associated with insulin resistance? The answer is acanthosis nigricans. That's very important, guys. Acanthosis nigricans. Now, Prader Willis syndrome might come up with obesity and ultimately result in diabetes. In the same way, trisomy 21, Kleinfelter and Turner syndromes, they cause diabetes as a secondary dysfunction. Now coming to treatment, the most important thing is uh, education of the patient. Then insulin treatment for type 1, there is no place for oral diabetic agents like metformin in type 1. Oral agents are used in type 2. Now, diabetic ketoacidosis. You should immediately start IV fluids and IV insulin. And as you know, IV insulin causes hypokalemia. So you should also give potassium to these patients. Now, let us talk a few things about uh, insulins. The newest insulin regimens like uh, insulin glogen, Lantus, Homolog or Novolog at breakfast, lunch, dinner and uh, before snacks. These insulins guys are, uh, and girls, they are very, very nice because Lantus, it gives 24 hour coverage. And insulin pump therapy with uh, using this, the same kinds of insulins, homolog or novolog. So the basic types we use are lantus, homolog, novolog, NPH, regular, premixtures of 70 by 30 and 75 by 25. So these are the things we need to remember. And there is also a role for immunosuppressives. Why immunosuppressives? Because one theory says that diabetes is an autoimmune disorder and the beta cells of the pancreas are under attack by autoantibodies. Now, by using immunosuppressive agents like cyclosporin, you can actually combat that autoimmune mechanisms and save the remaining function of the pancreas. That's why immunosuppressive agents like cyclosporin are being thought of as useful in the prevention of diabetes mellitus. So basically, those are the basic things that we have seen the symptoms and signs and the basic diagnostic tests and the, the treatment that is insulin and, in, um, and also the prevention of uh, chronic complications. You can, you can visit my website at uh, usmlevideos.net. Thank you.